What is going to happen? A whole bunch of games are going to come out in that month. Beautiful. Let's find out what those games are. If you thought being a freelancer was all about doing your own taxes and chasing invoices, Anthem might change your mind. In this ambitious online space shooter, freelancers work in teams and inside javelin armor suits to get sweet loot and take down ludicrous bosses. Anthem, funny old proposition, isn't it? Yeah, do, they, do these freelancers invoice for all their robot I assume suit so. yeah, they, at the end of the month? Yeah, well that's, I mean, you know, the, the javelin suits, are, that's a tax write-off. Yeah. I've still not seen a lot of Anthem. No, me either. They showed a couple of gameplay demos where it looked cool when you're flying along in your robot suit, mm -hmm. just having a great old time in your javelin, yep. and then you go <laughs> into the sea. Yes, oh, and that you was go cool. around underwater. A bit of underwater stuff. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. See I, more of that. I, yeah, I, I have a, some mild concerns just in the sense that it, it's Bioware making it, obviously mm -hmm. like a, a really, really cool and, and interesting studio. Reputable. Yes, but generally this isn't the kind of game that they are most well known for. Well, I mean, famously you can't romance anyone in it. Yeah, you're not going to be no romancing in Anthem, which is a bit controversial. They're those yeah. sort of branching storylines, whereas this is very much feels like it's in the Destiny model. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I feel like they were going for that Destiny model with mm. this. Um, you know, Bioware... A good company. I know a lot of people didn't really get on board with Mass Effect Andromeda, so yeah. I think they've lost a little bit of that goodwill uh, from people. So I'm not going to say it's like make or break for Bioware, but this is an important game for them. They need this to be a hit, really. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it looks beautiful, and like when a game really nails that cooperative online stuff, like there's, it's, that's so thrilling. Like you know, yeah. it, it's it's rare that a game nails it that it's really enjoyable. But... Yeah, like all. The signs are there for Anthem being good. I just haven't seen enough of it yet to really draw in a, like a proper opinion about it. I'm still, it's still like a really unknown quantity for me. It's a fingers crossed situation. Yeah. The third instalment of the gloomy post-apocalyptic Metro series sees things get a little brighter, as hero Artyom gets out of the Moscow Metro and sets off on a continent-spanning adventure. Expect train travel, an open world, and weapons made from bits of old soup cans, I guess. So he's not in the Metro anymore? No, he's... Why is it called Metro? It's going all over the place now. Called Train. Train simulator. Why isn't it called Continent? Continent. <laughs> I, I don't know why they didn't call it Train. <laughs> the mind model. It's right there. I've played, Continent could also yeah. mean that he can hold his beer in. That's true. Which, I mean, for I've only played a small amount of the game. Did he wet himself in it? He, he didn't. No. Well, there you go. It's so, so doubly so appropriate to the game. <laughs> Your theory, dare I say, holds water. <laughs> Much like Artyom, <laughs> like Artyom, the main character The continent Metro. hero of Metro. Yeah, I've played a little bit of this. Uh, right, I think it's quite sure. fun. I think the best comparison, weirdly, is Half-Life, because it's got that open world feel, but actually it is sort of funneling you through a, like a fairly linear story, I think, assuming that the little bit that I've played is representative of the whole game. There's like a big, in this bit I was playing, there's a big desert you can explore and look around, but actually you've got a waypoint to go to, and when you go there, there's this, you, you basically walk through a little set piece which leads to, you know, like a scripted action thing. That sounds cool, is it um, sort of, leaning on the horror aspect of it. I don't think it is. I think it's Metro leaning stuff. more on that sort of like open world harvesting things like um, upgrades and crafting. And oh yeah, because you can sort of bolt together weapons out of like junk and stuff, right? Yeah, I believe so. I think weapon customization is insanely complicated. There are a few bits of uh, brutal realism in, in Metro Exodus. So for example, you have to uh, wipe your gas mask because it gets all... Oh, yeah, they weary. had that in, in previous Metro games. It's oh. It's horrible because yeah, it gets yeah. all fogged up. Yeah, and you have to take it off and clean it. Uh, also, um, some of your like weapons are sort of pneumatic, like gas powered, which means every now and again you have to like hide behind a wall and go like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like it's a super soaker. It's very awesome. ambitious. Very ambitious. I, if the story, if the story is compelling enough to keep you going through the, through those set pieces, yeah, I think it could be a winner. Announced way back in 2014, Crackdown 3 is at last inbound in February. This open world sci-fi cop simulator focuses on destruction above all else, asking you to deliver savage justice in the island city of New Providence, a metropolis built on a newly reignited volcano which is in the grip of gangsters and mega corporations. Sounds chill. Why would you build a city on top of a newly ignited volcano? Well, I think they built it there thinking, oh, the volcano is not ignited. And then, and then it became and then ignited. Nightmare, it went, it ignited. And then they, they looked at Pompeii and Vesuvius mm, and they went, love it. Like what they did there. Pompeii, you had the right idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is this really coming out, Luke? Okay, it... look, at the time of writing, at the time of filming, Crackdown 3 is coming out in February, but it's been 
Well, I mean, Andy's look says it all. <laughs> if you're watching this and Crackdown 3 is no longer coming out in February, all I can say is that this game has been moved around and messed about with so many times. It showed knows literally what's going on. almost nothing of it. Yeah, it's very... The most recent yeah. trailer was just Terry Crews shouting. Well, the first Crackdown was a real cult hit, wasn't Great. it? It yeah. was yeah, a really, really fun, chaotic game. Yeah. With this one, they've gone Crackdown for... Crackdown 2. Not so good. Not so good, okay. But with Crackdown 3, they've, they're have they going for this, this like total destruction sandbox thing. Yeah. Which, I don't know, it gives me like sort of a Just Cause kind of vibe. That's sort of what Just Cause yeah. is, isn't it? Like mayhem. And... Or like uh, when Saints Row went all super... Heroic. Yeah, 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 exactly. Only with destroyable buildings. Mm -hmm. In theory, it'll be a good game. Like, Crackdown was good, and the technology they claim that it has is yeah. impressive sounding. Yeah. Plus, yeah. if Terry Crews is involved in some capacity... Which he is. I'm on board. Yeah. I mean, that's a guaranteed 6 out of 10. Yeah, mm -hmm. just for the inclusion just of Terry, Terry Crews. Be Pong, but, Pong, but with Terry Crews yelling. <laughs> the ball is going back and forth between Terry Crews' pecs. <laughs> 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 If you were thinking, hey, three open world sci-fi games isn't enough for me this February, then hold on to your hats, because otherwise some irradiated bandit from Far Cry New Dawn is likely to try and steal it. This spin-off game is set in Hope County, the region from Far Cry 5, now ravaged by nuclear war. I'm weirdly excited for this, even though I wasn't a huge fan of Far Cry 5. You finished Far Cry 5 and you hated the ending so much. Mmm, it was... Yes, I did. I, I found Hope County was the least fun of all the Far Cry environments mm. to date. But what to if move it around were all in. Mad Maxi? Yeah, I mean they are they are mixing it up. It's not just going to be the exact same map. So yeah. hopefully, I don't know. And uh, you know, the, like the Far Cry formula, I find really really enjoyable. That sort of like survival in the yeah. wilderness and taking out outposts is really fun. They've promised to, that this game will sort of explain what happened to the characters in Far Cry 5, which is not that compelling a proposition to me. But yeah, I suppose if you are hoping and desperate to find out what happens to, for example, the prophet Joseph Seed, sure, popular character, popular character, <laughs> prophet yeah. Joseph Seed, yeah. and dogs can get in cars now. Of course, the main feature: dogs can now get in cars. Can they drive the cars? I assume so. Great. You can get out the car, just let the dog just go off and do the mission for you. Six out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Manga worlds collide in Jump Force. This quirky fighting game sees you taking three heroes into battle, with the roster drawing on the worlds of Dragon Ball, Bleach, One Piece, Naruto and others. This is an odd one. The camera is behind you, which yes. is pretty unusual for a fighting game. I've played a small amount of this. Mm -hmm. It's stupidly epic. The actual fighting, you go in the sky and right. fight for a bit and then so you can smash down to earth. It's like a kind of all-stars fighting game with characters from like all the Shonen Jump stuff. Yeah, exactly. One Piece, Dragon Ball, mm -hmm. Bleach, mm -hmm. Naruto. Naruto. Yeah. Others, many others. Maybe Boruto. Maybe. <laughs> is that real? I don't know. The, the premise is definitely interesting. I, I think you, you would probably only need to be a fan of even just one of those series to, to be quite into it. The only the only one of those that I really know very well is, is the Dragon Ball stuff. The All the super moves are absolutely ludicrous in this oh, game. Yeah. I like that you can be in the sky and like punch someone down into the earth. All three of your characters share a health bar as well. So, okay. which, so you, can you just swap them in and out? On the yeah, fight. you just sort of swap them in and out. It's kind cool. of interesting. Yeah. yeah. What would be really interesting is, is with fighting games, like sometimes they, they have this whole other life if there is a really strong competitive like esports angle to it. Yeah. And so I'd be interested to find out if this game, because it has this sort of quirky behind camera mechanic, actually does have like a slightly unusual like yeah. competitive angle to yeah, it. That'd be definitely interesting to see if they include it in like Evo or something like that, one of those big fighting game tournaments. Okay. Yeah, because they've added like a bunch of games in there that you wouldn't think like Smash and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Driving in the mud gets its most realistic video game ever in Dirt Rally 2.0. Driving fans can look forward to hooning their way around real-life environments from around the world, and then ruin those tracks because this is the first Dirt Rally game to feature track degradation. Andy, why did you visibly slump just I now didn't. when I said track degradation? I didn't, I'm sure it's good. <laughs> it's a good feat. I know that Mike's looking forward to it, and that's the barometer of if a driving game is probably going to be good. That's true, although I've never seen a driving game that Mike wasn't excited for, so... Ah, uh, no, that's a good point. <laughs> if you are of the car persuasion, if you like racing games, I, I feel like this one does bring quite a lot to the table because it's got the real tracks, real world, like, real world locations. It's got the all the licensed vehicles and go stuff. sideways around a muddy corner. Exactly. Yeah, they've they've done a bunch of refining to the like the modelling of the, of the physics and the handling. So if that kind of stuff is what gets your motor running, yeah, 
If it's what smokes your tires, it's good. It's Why don't I text Mike and ask him, is Dirt Rally 2 going to be good? Sent. Cool. And now here's his response. There you go. There it is. Next game. City building sim Anno is back, and this time the theme is the lung-ruining smog of the Industrial Revolution. Expect to deal with strikes, new modes of transport like trains, and presumably roving gangs of chimney sweeps bursting into song. In Japanese, Anno is a sort of word like um or uh that you oh, really? put into conversation. Yeah. So when you're answering a question, you'd be like, Anno. Anno. To like oh. give yourself pause to to think. Oh, nice. So I don't know if this is this game in this country should be called. Um, um, that is a better fact than any I have prepared uh, about the game series Anno because I haven't yeah. played any of them. But uh, they, I, you know, I, the city building Sims. Can you ever have too many of them? No, no. I, I do so. like. I do. I have to say, I, am, I do really like the idea of one that is themed around the Industrial Revolution. Like yeah. looking at the gameplay for this, it's all this all, like very distinctive architectural style. How many factories can you build before the choking smog? Well, starts to kill people. So apparently that's something that you're going to have to factor in. I don't yeah. think this is something that the actual Victorians worried about too much. No, but, but no. yeah, you, you're going to have to balance the sort of the productivity and 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 factories of, of the of the cities you're building with yeah. kind of how that's harming the beauty of it and the health of the population and stuff like that. So tourism is going to be a factor, which is kind of interesting. Okay, cool. So you can build things like the Crystal Palace, the Great Exhibition, to draw people in. That would be great. That would be amazing, actually. Yeah. Have a big exposition. Oh, and you could make the Crystal Palace dinos oh, dinosaurs. Dinosaur. World's Fair. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Now. There's no World's yeah. Fair in the game. I'm out. So those are some of the games coming out in February, Andy. If you could play only one, if you could play only one of them, which would it be? Uh, I'd like to play Crackdown 3, just to verify it exists. Yeah, just real. to confirm. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, some sort of like a cryptid, like a chupacabra. I'd yeah. like to like check that it's not like a, um, just, a yeah. fish and a monkey <laughs> sewn together. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> I can see the headlines now. Yeah. Craig down three turns yeah. out. <laughs> to be fish and monkey sewn together. How do we know? <laughs> we don't. We're yeah. not fooled, say gamers. It's just a monkey and a fish <laughs> in a game box. <laughs> That's a good choice. I'm going to go for, um, I think I'm going to go for Metro, actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of excited for Metro. I like that sort of Half-Life feel. But then Anthem, what if we're all playing Anthem? We could all be in Javelins, we could be in a team on the yeah, internet. Yeah, we could be teaming up and shooting big frog monsters beep, 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 in the jungle. Beep, 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 That'd be sweet. That'd be fun, mm. flying around. Yeah. So are there any games that we missed that are coming out in February that we did not mention? If so, why not pop out what's coming out in the comments so that your fellow travellers can can see them and get more ideas of what they could be playing mm. in February 2019. Other than that, thanks for watching guys, goodbye. Bye.